What's up guys, we're going to be taking a look at a stored cross-site scripting attack. Remember, stored implies that the attack persists in the page, perhaps lies dormant until an unsuspecting user visits the page, or in this case, clicks on a certain link which causes JavaScript to execute. Let's take a look at the lab. So we see a regular blog style web page. And on each of the blog posts, we have the ability to leave a comment. So a comment is something that will persist in the page. It's likely stored on a backend database somewhere. And anytime we leave a comment, it means that we're permanently changing the page. An entry is going to be appended into a database somewhere. And every time a new user visits the page, they're going to be able to see our comment load up. Now, first of all, we want to get a feel for how this comment system works. So we're just going to create a fake comment to scope this out. We'll leave a fake name and we'll leave an email address. So we'll put a fake email. This is my email as it happens, but you can put a fake email if you're testing a site. And we also want to include a website. It's kind of interesting that it asks for a website because if you think about the way that most comments on blog posts work, they might ask for a name, maybe even an email, but they wouldn't usually ask for a website. Anyway, that's the functionality here. Let's see what it actually does with this information. So we'll go to post comment. Your comment has been submitted. Now, if we go back to the blog, we're expecting to see our comment. So we have our fake comment and we have fake name, but notice fake name is a hyperlink. So that's interesting. What happens when we click the hyperlink? Well, we're actually taken to the site URL that we provided. So it appears what the developer had in mind is that if we clicked on the username, of someone that posted a comment, we would be able to visit the website of the poster. Of course, the irony is that it doesn't work like that anyway, because as you can see, the URL is actually appended to the address of the lab. So it's a relative rather than absolute path. So it wouldn't take us to our site anyway, which is kind of ironic, but you get the feel for what the web developer is trying to do, even though it doesn't work in this case. And we also get a sense that we have the ability to arbitrarily create links on this page. In fact, if we inspect this element, we'll see an anchor tag with a href attribute. And that href attribute points to the address of the website we provided when creating our comment. Now, one thing that developers don't always realize is that we don't have to specify a URL in that href attribute. It's actually possible to specify JavaScript. One thing that we can tell is that we have complete control over the value of that href attribute. So let's create a new comment and let's see how it's possible to directly execute JavaScript from within that href attribute of the anchor tag. So we'll make a second fake comment. So my second fake comment will provide another fake name. We'll provide an email. This really doesn't change the attack, but it's this field that we're interested in because the contents of this website text input is going to end up as the value of that href attribute. So the question is, how do we execute JavaScript from within href attribute? We can use JavaScript colon. So many developers are not aware of this because this is not a typical way to make use of JavaScript. It's more common to make use of an on click attribute, for example, and specify some JavaScript within the value of that attribute. It's fairly rare that you'll see JavaScript invoked directly from a href attribute. But the point is we can do it. It's functional JavaScript and there's nothing technically wrong with it or insecure by default with JavaScript colon. The real issue here is that the web developer is allowing us to inject arbitrary links to the page. So that's the insecure part of this, not the JavaScript colon aspect of this itself. So let's post a comment and we'll immediately get the message that we've solved the lab. But of course we actually want to see the exploit at work. So let's choose back to blog. 
we can see our second comment there. We can see a clickable anchor tag, which will follow shortly. So the idea is this cross-site scripting attack doesn't launch instantly when we visit the page because it's actually contained within this link. So when we click on this link, if we inspect it, let's check out that href attribute. We can see href equals JavaScript alert. In other words, when we click on this anchor tag, that JavaScript is going to be executed. So we can run whichever arbitrary JavaScript we want in the user's browser when they click on this link here. So let's see that at work. We're going to click the link and now we see the JavaScript alert flashed to the screen. So this is a stored cross-site scripting attack because it's going to affect any visitor to the page. It's not contained within the URL itself. It's contained within this link, which is stored in a database somewhere alongside our comment. So this exploit will persist every time a new user comes to the page and clicks on this link then the cross-site scripting attack is going to be executed.